Pullman Hotels, partners of all your travels. Well, welcome back. Good morning to you, James. Morning, We're looking Hannah. at the international papers now, aren't we? Yes, so. indeed. And so we'll start with the Christian Science Monitor, Boston-based newspaper. And with all the espionage intrigue during the week, obviously there's all sorts of analysis surrounding that. They have the top five old school espionage technologies that still work. And apparently a lot of uh, technologies going back to World War One even are still in use. And one of the examples they give is invisible ink. And apparently that is the oldest, um, it's the, uh, the the classified information in the US that dates back the furthest, the, the recipe for the invisible ink. The oldest trick in the book, then. Exactly. So, and they say if it's still classified, it's still being used, because it would have been declassified otherwise. Uh, transposition ciphers, uh, that's, uh, I'll explain that. That's is, been yes. used since <laughs> World War II. It sounds like a lot of jargon, really. Basically, it's codes that scramble the order of letters in a message. So instead of hello there, you might have something like, they give it the example here, I can't even find it. Yeah. Errol, Errol Tho, but I suppose, you know, whatever order you want to put it in. Okay. And then you have to undecipher uh, the order, etc., or decipher the order. Shortwave radio is another example, number of stations, burst transmissions. So they give, they break down basically the old school techniques that are still in use. So there you go. This is what struck me when this uh, story broke earlier this week is that, you know, they, they did the whole walk past in a park and, right. and exchanged briefcases. Which exactly. Just... And kind of having all of these coded sentences like, did I meet you in Malta in 1999? <laughs> no, I think it was Valletta in 2000. This kind of <laughs> stuff. It's like straight out of a novel uh, or a spy movie. Uh, the Moscow Times is also uh, re reacting to all of that. They're saying basically, yes, there will be a rift in US-Russian relations because of this uh, scandal. Mm -hmm. But the rapprochement between the two countries is very solid, not because of any dreams of friendship, but because it's based on national interests. The Russians, in, with their new economic, I suppose, aspirations, need close relations with the US and with Europe. So they say we must not lose a third opportunity. They talk about after the Cold War and after 9-11, opportunities were lost for close relations, least of all because of the comic opera antics of the country's respective secret services. So that's in the Moscow Times. Now, we'll move to the front page of The Guardian and uh, your dear beloved queen is on the front page uh, looking a little bit kind of unimpressed really. <laughs> What's uh, that in front with, of her? Uh, basically this is a dancer in Ottawa. Yesterday was Canada Day, the national uh -huh. holiday in Canada. So a dancer was performing and Prince Philip <laughs> Prince Philip looks to be like, looks, looks like he's, he's having a great it. time. <laughs> and they've got a very good headline, Canada Dry, which is a oh, gin and tonic uh, yes. brand. It looks like uh, Philip might have had a few, few little <laughs> tipples Canada of Canada Dry, dry himself. <laughs> but they're saying that the queen isn't really looking too amused. Now if we have a look at the Cal uh, a Calgary-based newspaper. Their editorial is, is, is entitled The Queen of Canada. Much of our greatness is symbolised by Her Majesty, says this paper. Uh, they say Canadians will be blessed uh, to have in their midst this of... This is not the headline that we were just showing. No, <laughs> we were definitely showing not. We will, we will come to that. We will <laughs> okay. come to that. Uh, but anyway, this, the Calgary Herald is more or less saying that Her Majesty is great. Happy birthday, Canada. And oh, God save the Queen. So they're saying you know, we should remember the links but with the, and acknowledge our debt to another country mm -hmm. and indulge in a Heartfelt rendition of God Save the Queen. So very pro monarchy. Oh, good. Yes. Uh, but they do have a poll which shows that 48% of Canadians think that the monarchy is a relic of the colonial past. Uh -huh. And obviously enough in Quebec, that figure is a little bit higher at 74%. So the, I suppose, French tra tradition there being much stronger. Now we'll have a look at uh, the International Herald Tribune. Uh, one of their, uh, I suppose, most uh, well-known um, columnists, Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Christ Christoph, is in mm -hmm. uh, the West Bank, actually, and he's writing from there. He says that the Israeli occupation of the West Bank is considered unsustainable and damaging to the country's image, but it is also, everyone kind of accepts that in Israel, but something else, it's morally repugnant. And he goes to a village uh, called Um al Kher. it's a, an Arab village in the West Bank, where basically uh, you need a building permit from Israel in order to construct anything, and often these building permits aren't granted so if, if they tried if the people in this village try to build something straight away the army come in and raise it to the ground and just on the other side of a barbed wire fence you've got an is Israeli colony uh, which looks like a, a car called Carmel which looks like a lovely green oasis much like an American suburb so he's describing the contrast between what's on one side, side of the barbed wire fence, okay. fence and on the other and so, so literally the grass is greener on the other side right. exactly now we'll finish with the Daily Mail well, the, the, we got a peek, sneak preview a while ago <laughs> sparring macaques in a Japanese spa now these are monkeys 
or macaques who have been copying human visitors to the spa in recent years. And perhaps like humans, they're also like, they want the best seat in the spa. So if we have a look at, this, at these photos, they show two females who started off with a staring contest. And then one tried to unseat the other and threw her off. And finally, once dominance, dominance was established, says the paper, the victorious party danced in triumph as the vanquished one moved slowly and shamefully away. That's so, how I do it when I want a good seat in a hot tub. <laughs> I was, I was saying it, it resembles a little bit the, the France 24 canteen in the morning. <laughs> Absolutely, James. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Anna. You were watching In the Papers, presented by Pullman Hotel.